And may I remind all of us at the beginning of the sermon, you and I have an assignment, and our assignment is to help people who cannot help themselves. Our assignment is to teach people who don't know, is to mentor people, is to mentor people who don't know the way. But I've discovered, Melissa, that some of the people who consider themselves the brightest, the best, the bolder, the most intellectual, the who has the mo- who have the most skill, they are the ones who has who have never taught anybody, have never mentored anybody, have never coached anybody. But do I do I have about ten and a half witnesses in the, in the house that will admit that I, I've been blessed? And if, in fact, you can admit you've been blessed, then you got to admit you've been blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. God has gifted you so that you could give somebody else. David said it this way, my cup running over. Why in the world would God overrun my cup unless it is for me to have enough for me and mine? And when I handle me and mine, the overflow is for you and yours. They were on assignment. They were on an assignment to assist this man. And there are four things that I want to teach you, that I want to teach you, that I want to challenge you by way of practical application. There are four things I want to tell you about assisting people when you are on your assignment. Number one is don't avoid assisting people. Don't avoid it because it's our mandate. It's our duty. It's our challenge. Our challenge is to help those who are unable to help themselves. Don't avoid helping people because if God anoints you and appoint you and assign you to help, he'll give you everything you need to accomplish your assignment. Don't avoid the Proverbs writer, Proverbs chapter 23, I believe in verse 27, the Proverbs writer talked about how we ought to not avoid helping one another. It is the will of God that we help that we help that we help somebody shout help that we help somebody shout help that we help one another Paul said in Galatians 6 especially those who are of the household of faith how do I know the when, who I'm supposed to help it's when uh, it's when your resources meet opportunity that's when you are obligated to help because Anne and Mary you can't help somebody if you can't help yourself I can't feed you if my refrigerator is empty I can't give you a ride if I'm thumbing a ride so when our God will allow opportunity to meet your resources these men these men these men get the story Jesus comes back in the Palestine and and these men bring one and the man is dead and the man has a speech impediment so number one don't avoid helping number two check this out I need to help somebody come real close so I can give you this one number two not only don't avoid helping people don't avoid assisting people number two when you assist people don't advertise it notice the text it says and they bring him unto him one that is dead and had an impediment of his speech and they beseech him put his right hand on him and they took him now check this out we don't even know who they are because they were not bragging about the fact that we assisted him God needs some people who are willing to assist and don't advertise that they did the assisting. Because you see, I'm at the point in my life, I would rather, Reverend and Dr. Stokes, I would rather stay in the dark than for you to help me pay my light bill and then you go out and advertise it. I'd rather walk to work than for you to give me a ride and then go out and advertise it. I'd rather, oh my God, I wish I had somebody to help me. I would rather you not help me if you got to put it all on Facebook and on Instagram talking about this is who I help and this is how I help. The devil is a liar. If you're going to help somebody, don't look at your neighbor and say, don't advertise it, don't advertise it. Because, oh my God, pastor, put me on Bible ground. Shame on you. You low down rascal. Everybody, everybody doesn't, need, doesn't need to know everybody's business. 
Turn to Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 1. Lord, help your boy teach this. Practical application. Don't avoid assisting, but then don't advertise. Matthew 6 and 1. When you got it, say, I got it. Matthew 6 and 1. It says, take heed. This is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. That you do not your arm, that you don't give to the poor. Giving alms was a matter of giving to the poor. Take heed that you don't give to the poor before men to be seen of them. Don't give and help people for show. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father in heaven. Why? Because you have the accolades and the praises of men. And I don't know about y'all. I would rather have God's reward than men patting me on my back because I've helped somebody and then advertised it. Verse 2. Therefore, when you help, when you give, don't sound the trumpet. Stay off Facebook with it. Stay off Instagram. Stay off your cell phone. He said, don't be at the hypocrites in the synagogue and in the streets that they may get the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, that is again, they have their reward. Verse 3, but when you assist, when you help, when you carry somebody, when you pay a bill, when you, when you, when you babysit their children, when you let them use your car, when you help somebody, he said, let not your left hand know what your right hand doing. That your helping, your assisting may be in secret. Oh, I got some secret Santa Claus in here. I've got some folk in here that always helping, that's always giving, and never, ever, 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 ever sound the trumpet because they've come to realize and they come to understand that you don't assist and then advertise. Go back to Mark. Number one, verse th I'm still in verse 32. They, the assignment to assist, they ab don't avoid assisting. Number two, don't advertise. Can I help somebody? Can I, let me lay this in your lap. Let me lay this in your lap, Reverend. When you're on assignment to assist, don't avoid assisting. Don't advertise assisting. Number three, don't add attachments to your assisting. The old folk call it putting strings on it. I'm going to help you, but you got to jump through hoops. You got to jump through love. You, you can, check this out. If you help somebody, I tell you what, I, I'm not going to talk about somebody. If you help me, when I can't help myself, all I owe you is a thank you. All I owe you is my gratitude. A whole lot of folk, when they help you, they want to put some strings on it. And act like because they help you pay a bill, that you owe them your first child. Act like because they help you, you owe them a liver, you owe them a kidney, you owe them some eyes. The devil is a liar. You, I don't owe you anything but a debt of gratitude. And if I tell you thank you, because some folk want to help you and expect you to have this blind loyalty to them. And as soon as you go against them because they wrong, they're talking about, see there, you forgot what I did for you. The devil is a liar. I remember what you did for me, but you're still wrong. I was grateful then, and I'm grateful now, but that does not mean I got to have a lifelong loyalty to you and your foolishness. String. Matthew 10, 8. Says freely, preach boy, am I helping anybody? Yeah. It says freely you have received. So because you got it free, you ought to give it free. No attachments to your assisting because, oh my God, no 
a this man was deaf and this man had a speech impediment and they were on assignment and they didn't avoid it they didn't advertise it they does not seem they do not seem to have added any attachments to it and the reason we refuse to allow you to add attachments to your assistance is because uh, you ain't the source oh i wish i had somebody over here to help me because, see, we, we realize that you are not the source of the blessing. You are just the street that the Lord brought the blessing to through. You are not the provider. You are just the path. Now, we are grateful that God used you to help us. But check this out. If God didn't use you, he would have used somebody else. Because I, I'm like David. I was young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. If he hadn't used you, he would have used somebody else. Why? Because Paul said, for my God shall supply all of my need. If he hadn't used you, he would have used somebody else. So don't get it twisted the assignment to assist four things that I want to challenge you to do don't avoid it don't advertise it don't add to the attachment and then fourthly whoo, don't abandon me before you accomplish your assignment check out the text they didn't stop until they got the man to Jesus. Our ultimate assignment to assist is to assist people and introduce them to Jesus. It's to get them to Jesus. But on a, another level, we are obligated to help people that can't help themselves. But don't abandon me before you get me to your said destination. If you're taking me to Jesus, don't leave me at the church. If you're taking me to Jesus, don't leave me at the altar. If you're taking me to Jesus, don't leave me there. Take me all the way and introduce me to the man from Galilee. Oh, Mary, I'm preaching, Ben, they talking. He says, they bring him unto him, verse 32, one that was deaf and had an impediment of speech. They got the man 